Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. We welcome you this morning. Welcome you, those that are watching virtually. We welcome you to the Greater Bible Way Temple. Bless the Lord. We welcome you to this house where the Spirit of the Lord is. There is liberty. We give God praise for each and every last one of you that have came out. Those that are watching virtually, we thank God for you. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. For I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. We are thankful that God has allowed us to see another day. Another day for me to lift up my hands and tell God thank you. Another day for me to open up my mouth and give God praise. Another day, another day that the Lord has made. Come on, somebody rejoice. You better rejoice. You ought to be glad about it. He gave you another chance. He gave you another opportunity. And for that alone, we give God praise. We give God praise. We give God glory. We give God honor. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow down before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. That's why we enter into his court with thanksgiving. We enter into his court with praise. And we are thankful unto him. And we're going to bless his holy name. Come on, somebody, bless him. Come on, people of God, and give God praise. He's worthy. God is worthy, worthy of all praise, worthy of your praise, yes, worthy of your praise, yes, worthy of your praise. Come on and bless him, somebody. Bless him, we worship him, and adore his holy name. We thank God, we thank God, we thank God, we thank God. Yes, we bless him. Listen, I don't know about you, but I'm excited about today because God is going to do something wonderful and amazing in your eyes. God is going to do something wonderful and amazing. Come on and bless him, people of God. Bless him. We bless him. I love I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. I just want to thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Lord, I love you more than anything. Yes, sir. Oh, come on, help me say, I love you. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. I worship and adore you. I just want to tell you, just want to tell you. Lord, I love you. I love you more than anything. Come on, anybody love them this morning? Oh. I love you, Jesus. I worship, I worship and adore. I just want to tell you. Just want to tell you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you more than anything. Come on, let's pray to one more time. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. I worship and, and adore you. I just want to tell you. Just want to tell you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you more than Come on. Anything. Come on and bless them, somebody. Come on and bless them, somebody. Jesus. I need you, 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 Jesus. I need you,
everyone to rest on your feet as we prepare to go before the throne of grace I love you I love you more than anything more than my house more than my car more than my job more than my mother more than my father Lord I love you more than anything God I don't know about you but I can't make it without him I can't make it without him if you're near someone, if you're around someone, would you grab them by the hand in the name of Jesus? Hallelujah. God is indeed worthy as we go before the throne of grace. Touch someone's hand just for a few minutes, just for a few moments. Whatever your need is today, God's got it. Whatever it is that you're asking God to do for you, God's got it. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. God, we give you praise on this morning. God, we know that you can do anything but fail. God, we thank you for another chance for us to lift up your name, another chance for us to give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. God, we know that you're already here. God, we thank you for meeting every need. God, we thank you for supplying all of our needs according to your riches and glory. God, whatever it is that you have for us today, we thank you in advance for it. God, we thank you for healing. We thank you for deliverance. We thank you for the miracle. We thank you for opening up doors for us. God, we thank you for making way for us. God, we thank you. We bless your holy name. God, you're worthy of all honor. And today, God, whatever it is that you see fit to do, God, we thank you in advance. God, we're going to give you more praise than before. We're going to give you more honor than before. Why? Because you're worthy of all praise. God, we thank you in advance for the miracle that's about to happen. God, we thank you for in advance for the people that I'm interceding for, those that cannot be here, but I'm standing in the gap on their behalf. God, some need healing for their bodies. Some need the saving of their soul. Some need an opportunity to be placed into their tomorrows. God, we thank you right now for what it is that you're about to do. God, if you will take control of the program, God, and if you see interrupted, if you will, God, we thank you for what you're about to do. God, we thank you for the word that's about to be proclaimed. God, let it sink deep down in our hearts. Lord God, that we may be hearers of your word and doers of your word as well. God, we never cease to give you all the praise and all the glory. As I loose my neighbor hand, I give you all the praise. I give you all the honor. In Jesus' name, come on and bless up somebody. 
service now in the sand. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Come on, praise Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give Him some glory. Give Him some glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the wonderful name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless Hallelujah. our mighty Savior. Hallelujah. Bless our risen King. Hallelujah. Bless Him. Bless Him. Hallelujah. Just for a quick moment, give Him your best praise. Open up your mouth. Hallelujah. Open up your heart. Hallelujah. And let the abundance of his glory fill you with the praise. Hallelujah. You can't help but to thank him. You can't help but to praise him. Hallelujah. For he is worthy. He is worthy of all the praise. Yes, God. Yes, God. Lord, we love you. Hallelujah. Lord God, we can't live without you. We can't make it without you. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Give him glory. Hallelujah. Magnify him. Magnify him. Blessed Jesus. Hallelujah. For he is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. It's Founder's Day today. Hallelujah. We thank God. Hallelujah. For this blessed day. Hallelujah. We thank God for the leadership. Hallelujah. Of our late bishop. Hallelujah. If he didn't answer the call, we wouldn't be here today. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless the Lord. Hallelujah. We celebrate your Jesus. We celebrate your God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for being so good. We celebrate you for being so kind. Hallelujah. We celebrate you for being so loving. Lord God, we celebrate you for being so faithful. We bless the Lord. We bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Ain't God good? Hallelujah. We serve a mighty God. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord for blessing us to live to see this day. We celebrate this day, hallelujah, for our Founders Day, hallelujah. Yes, yes. We thank God for our late Bishop Henry Allen Gibbs Sr. Amen. We Amen. thank God for the vision that God has given him. Yes. Hallelujah, Jesus. And, and the legacy that we are striving to fulfill and maintain, we thank God for his leadership, for yes. his dedication, for his commitment to God's people. Yes. And we bless the Lord for blessing us, for giving us a pastor after our own heart. How mighty God is. Oh, and we yes. bless the Lord. And at this time, we're going into worship. These are some of the songs that Bishop truly enjoyed. No matter what, when it came to praise and worship, he always found himself in the midst of praise and worship just to give God the ultimate praise. So if you don't mind just joining us, a few congregational songs to celebrate Jesus for blessing us with a wonderful founder. Come on, put your hands together. I'm a soldier.
goes before God. He said, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, hallelujah. I'm here to tell you not only Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but the God of Henry. I serve a mighty God. I serve a mighty God. For he raised up in the midst of us, hallelujah, an awesome leader. He raised in the midst of us, hallelujah, an awesome provider. Thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It is through his faith. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, that we're able to stand here. Oh, we bless you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Yes, God. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless him. Bless him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the Lord. 
glory, we give him praise. We give God all honor. Hallelujah, Jesus. For if it had not been for the faithfulness of Bishop Gibbs, if it had not been, Greater Bible Way Temple would not be here. Hallelujah, we would not be able to sit in this place because through his faith, hallelujah, he told, hallelujah, the owner, the last owner of this place, you give me one service, just let me have one service. 32 years later, we're still here. I hope he ain't waiting for just that one service because we had mentally plenty of services in this place. Souls were saved, bodies were healed, faith was renewed, all predicated upon the faithfulness of his elected vessel. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless the Lord. Hallelujah. We truly thank the Lord, and at this time, we pressing for time, and at this time, we're going to have our morning scripture being read to us by Sister Veronica Gibbs. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. This morning scripture is coming from 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, starting at verse 15. 2 Corinthians 4, 15. Thank you, Jesus. Ask everyone to stand to give reverence to the word of God. Second Corinthians 4, 15. For all things are for your sake, that the abundant grace through the thanksgiving of many rebound to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light afflictions which is but for a moment worketh for us as far more exceeding an external weight of glory while we look not at the things which are seen but at the things which are not seen for the things which are seen are temporal but the things which are not seen are eternal the word of the Lord is already blessed. Amen. We bless the Lord. We truly thank God, hallelujah, for that spiritual interruption. Hallelujah. We bless yes. the Lord for the scripture that has come forth. We give God thanks and praise. I mean, yes. we continually cherish it in our hearts and apply it in our daily walks in life that we will be the soldier that the Lord is coming for yes. in these yes. last and evil days. And the people of God gave thanks for the yes. reading oh, of his Lord. mighty words. We bless, bless the Lord. And at this time, we're going to have our church announcements being brought to us. Let's receive it with a hearty amen. 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 Praise the Lord, everybody. These are our church announcements. We invite you to join us for our in-person morning service each first and third Sunday at 1030 a.m., and for our virtual online service each Sunday on Facebook at GBWT 440. Our prayer list is a way for us to lift all requests unto God. If you are in need of prayer, please send your prayer request to Greater Bible Way Temple at yahoo.com. We serve a God who always desires to do more in our lives. Join us as we enter into the season of harvest with a focused week of fasting and prayer from Sunday, September 25th through Saturday, October 1st, seeking God's direction. Our fasting and prayer guide will be available on our website at www.gbwt440.org to help you in this spiritual experience. And then on Sunday, October 2nd, we will end our Harvest Week with our annual Harvest Celebration Service at 10.30 a.m., where our guest speaker will be Bishop Jeremiah Eldridge, Temple of Praise Incorporated. Words of encouragement for the week. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. Isaiah 28, 16. The prophet Isaiah spoke prophetically 
about the stone which the Lord God would lay in Zion. Being a tri-stone means it's being tested and proven. Then as a precious cornerstone, it means it's the most important stone in the building, while as the sure foundation, it means you can stake your life on it. It matters the foundation upon which your life is built. The Bible says, for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. He is the true and firm foundation. Make him the foundation of your success today by employing the principles of his word in all your dealings. That way, when contrary winds blow against you, you'll remain standing because you're found in the, upon the rock, Christ Jesus. In the face of adversity, you will be unshakable because on Christ, the solid rock, you stand. Remember, the foundation is what makes the difference. When the houses that Jesus illustrated in the book of Luke were confronted with the same flood, the house without a foundation came to ruin. No wonder the song writer wrote, on Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is seeking sand. Let Christ the solid rock be the foundation and anchor in your life. Be a doer of God's word, for that's how to build your life on the solid rock. That's what will keep you from standing when all else fails. That what will keep you on the solid foundation of success and prosperity all your life. Have a victorious week. Service back in the hands of Sister Gibbs. Amen. We thank God for those encouraging words. We thank God for those announcements. Please keep them in your heart. For we truly enjoy the fellowship of God's people. But we truly know that God ordered our steps. And I believe God ordering our steps to meet in this place again. We bless the Lord. Beloved, the word of God is in the house. The word of God is in the house. We bless the Lord. And no matter where you're at, whether you're viewing us live stream or whether you're here in the temple, we're going to ask you just to rest on your feet and just raise your hands up into the heavens and repeat after me, bread of heaven, feed me until I want no more. Bread of heaven, feed me until I want no more. Beloved, I present to you the pastor of Greater Bible Way Temple, none other than Elder Carl Gibbs Sr., for he will bring forth the man of God that God has blessed us to be in our presence upon this morning. Let's receive him with a hearty amen. 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 God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. We thank God for you. We thank God for the service thus far. We pray that God has. Amen. You received something out of the service thus far. Could you do me a favor? Could you look at someone and just wave at them and tell them, praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. I see you, Tony. I see you, uh, Janelle. God bless you, Josh. Amen. Oh, my God. I see you, Diamond. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. I thank God for you, Kenny. Amen. Amen. Dick, I thank God for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank God for all things. God continue to do all things well. We thank God for this day. It's Founders Day. It's Founders Day. Amen. Back in 1991, God has laid on the heart of a visionary. Amen. The name of Bishop Henry Allen Gibbs Sr. And he propelled forward trusting God, amen, for all things. And he started the ministry, Greater Bible Way Temple on 52nd and Larchwood in a storefront, amen. And we stayed there for a short time, and God gave him a vision, amen, to lead God people, amen. And God told him to go catch man. Amen. That's what exactly what he did. He went on, amen, started the ministry, amen, and here we're now here at 63rd and Gerard, and we thank God, amen, for the visionary. We thank God for the founder, amen, Bishop Henry Allen Gibbs Sr., amen. Somebody give God a praise for him, amen. Thank God for him, amen. I love him with all my heart, amen. 
and thank God. I'm just not saying that because that's my father. I'm saying that because, amen, he has demonstrated to us, amen, amen, the awesome way of serving God in true holiness, amen. And all he said, one of the uh, cliches that he always said, all God wants is some praise. Yes, that's yes. He would pause. He would pause right there and he said, all God wants is some praise. And that's what the people would say. Praise, 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 praise taught us that if I'm in a situation, praise to get me out of it. Amen, amen. Because a whole lot of folk want you to, you know, wear your feelings on your sleeve, want you to look down, despondent, like, amen, like you lost your best friend. But if you ever want to confuse the enemy and those that are around you that really don't like you, if you ever want to confuse them, give God praise. And focus, say, how can you praise God with all the hell going on around you? I've learned that praise is a weapon that God, amen, is going to work on my behalf. We thank God for him. Amen, amen. A scholarship fund, amen, started Amen, amen, when Bishop, uh, his demise in 2018, the scholarship fund, amen, was started, amen, and we're, uh, one of the things that Bishop, amen, really stressed upon his household, his household, and he said to us, and that really, really uh, pushed us, he said to every last one of us, all, all eight of us, all seven of us at that time, amen, I'm going to be the dumbest one in this house. And he was the smartest one in the house. And he says, I'm going to be the dumbest one in the house. Meaning that you have to really push yourself in education. And that's one of the things that Bishop really, amen, amen, pushed his people to educate themselves. Amen, amen. Because for some folks don't want you to read. Some folks don't want you to learn. Some folks don't want you to excel. But he challenged us, and not only did he challenge his household, he challenged the people of God. He challenged, amen, the young, the youth, amen, even the young kids back then, they would call them pop-pop, amen, amen, and he would challenge them to excel, and the scholarship fund was, amen, amen, birth out of that, and every year at this time, we have a special sacrifice of $100. Those are the, amen, the parishioners, amen, members of Greater Bible Temple, amen. There's a special sacrifice seating of $100. And I'm making sure that, amen, I'm going to be the first one to give my first 100, amen, amen. One thing Bishop has taught us to be givers, amen. He's taught us how to seed. And if you ever want to reap a harvest, you got to learn how to sow. Amen. You got to learn how to seed. And this is the purpose of this uh, service to promote education to, amen, for the scholarship fund. Amen. Amen. I'm trying to remember the, uh, the, the prerequisites for those that are uh, uh, inquiring about the scholarship fund. Amen. And I think it's an essay that you have to write. I have to find out more information on that before the service is over. Amen. But we thank God for that. It comes a part of service where every last one of us participate in. You cannot beat God's giving, no matter how hard you try. But I tell you, the more you give, the more he'll give back to you. Press down, shaking together, running over, back in good measure will he return unto your bosom. I'm a firm witness that God will do the impossible. Amen. God will do the impossible. I was talking to my cousin up in the office and telling him about some things that's happening in my life. And I thank God for the opportunity, amen, for the job opportunity that he has given us, amen, to, to go forward. I don't want to tell you the amount, but he knows the amount. But, you know, it's a nice uh, 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 five-digit number that we're project that we're working on that he has granted us favor and amen and i see i see god is moving amen in a mighty way and it's all because i've learned how to sow there's a time called seed time and harvest physically speaking seed time is a time of sowing and harvest time is the time of reaping 
what you sow. Now, follow me if you will, prophetically. If you wish to receive something from God but not giving, what more do you think God is going to do? Seed, meaning that, uh, uh, that you have to plant, that you have to sow something out of you. Amen, amen. And it's just not monetary. Amen, amen. God says, in all thy increase, and we think that it's just limited to our monetary. No. And all thy increase, whether it's education and on your job, to find in your mindset, whatever God gives you increase, favor in your life. God says, I just don't want it all. Just give me a tenth. Amen. That's why ministries, that's why we need folk in the ministry to help because of your gifts and because of your talent. Amen. Folk are just so focused on the monetary. No, it's all thy increase. And if God has increased you, Amen. We have some folk that have graduated this year in college. Sister Janelle, God bless you. I see Diamond is here. God bless you. Amen. Demetria, amen, 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 amen. And, and your increase. God has granted you increase in your knowledge. Use that for the glory of God. We're going to ask everyone that's physically able to rest on your feet. Amen. The ushers are on post. If you need an envelope, just raise your hand. They will come to you very carefully and very swiftly. Amen. Because I need to hear a word from the Lord, the Lord, amen, I need to hear a word from the Lord, and I know, amen, 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 there's going to be a word, amen, from the Lord today, amen, those of you that are here, amen, amen, those that are watching, you can click on the cash app, amen, whatever denomination God has laid on your heart, amen, the four ways to give is going to pop up on the screen, those that are watching virtually, amen, you can click on the cash app, and whatever denomination God has laid on your heart to give, you can do that also, Amen. You can write a check out to Greater Bible Way Temple. That's four words. Greater Bible Way Temple. You can mail all checks and correspondence to Greater Bible Way Temple 440. That's 442 North 63rd Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19151. Amen. Those that are here in person, yes. Amen. God bless you. Those that are watching on the church website, you can click on the donate button down at the bottom of your screen and whatever denomination God has laid on your heart to give. You can do that also. So those that are here, amen, would you be so kind to raise your seed offering up into this atmosphere and just repeat after me, with this seed I sow, supernatural blessings will flow. Come on, repeat after me, with this seed I sow, supernatural harvest will grow. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to say thank you for every giver. Lord God, that you return unto their bosom 100-fold in the name of Jesus. If by chance, my brother and my sister do not have anything to give, we ask that you would bless them. Amen. In the name of Jesus, that by the next time, they'll be able to seed into your kingdom. In Jesus' name, every heart say amen. Amen. Service now in the hands of the officials coming out the side aisle, back up the center in Jesus' name. God bless you.
somebody to create through this atmosphere 100 fold. It's coming my way. Somebody to declare and to create into this atmosphere 100 fold. It's coming my way. Amen. Thank God for every last one of you. Amen. Amen. Just be careful what you decree and declare out of your mouth. Amen. There, I tell the I, I tell the people of God there's something called the law of attraction. The law of attraction just simply means whatever you speak out of your mouth will come find you. What that means is that you got to be careful what you say. Man, I am broke. Broke will find you. I am sick as a dog. Guess what? Sickness will come find you. But if you learn how to flip the way you talk and say, I thank God for my blessing, I thank God for my miracle, it will come and find you. That's why some folk just bless all the time, because they learn how to speak it out of your mouth. There's a song, there's a song that Donald uh, Lawrence wrote and said, encourage yourself. If you waiting for folk to tell you, honey, you know you're blessed, God, you're healed. Honey, you, if, if folk don't tell you nothing, you got to learn how to encourage yourself and say, by his stripes, I'm healed. I am more than a conqueror. I am God's chosen vessel. I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I am a more than conqueror. Amen, amen, amen. The law of attraction. So you have to be careful what you say out of your mouth. You've got to be careful. You wonder why folk are sick. You wonder why folk are never getting anywhere. If you listen to what they say, honey, you, you, you speaking it yourself. The enemy is not doing nothing but listening to what you say, and then when you say it, find it, got it. But if you learn how to speak wellness over yourself, it will come and find you. I dare you this week to speak a word over yourself and say that job, that Janelle, that job that I've been asking God for, I got it. I got it. I thank God that I got it. I thank God for healing. My God. Somebody shout, I got it. We got to go. We got to go. The man of God is here. Amen. And I believe that there is a word of God for us. But before the word comes forth, uh, I'm going to set the order. The order is that we're going to have in your programs, those of you that have a program, a Sunday program, amen, you'll see the life, the legacy of our, found, of our founder. Uh, that is going to be read, amen, very shortly. And then immediately after that, Sister Jennifer is coming, and she's going to... Uh, read the bio of our guest, well, really not a guest, uh, the son, the son, son of the gospel, amen, amen, is because of Bishop, amen, speaking a word into this man's life. He is here today to now speak a word into your life. So in the order, we're going to have, amen, the life and the legacy of our founder, that's going to be read, and then immediately after that, Sister Jennifer is going to come and give the intro, the bio of our uh, Elder Benjamin Hardage. And then immediately after that, I'm going to ask everyone to rest on your feet as he come forth in that order in Jesus' name. Get your programs. The life, the legacy of our founder. Bishop Henry A. Gibbs, Sr. was born September 17, 1937, the fifth child out of 13 children of the late Franklin and Lily Bell. 
Fanny Gibbs of Wadmala Island, South Carolina County of Charleston. Bishop Gibbs came to Philadelphia on February 16, 1962. There he resided with his uncle and aunt, the late Bishop B.F. Peterson Sr. and Mother Estella Peterson. After he heard the gospel preached, he was baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ on April 1, 1962 by Bishop Peterson Sr. also receiving the Holy Ghost coming out of the water that same day. Bishop Gibbs was called into the ministry by God and under the leadership of Bishop Peterson Sr. in 1965. He became the secretary of the Bible Way Church from 1963 to 1990 and was the assistant pastor of Bible Way Church from 1971 to 1990. From a blessed union with Margaret Hardison, deceased, he is the beloved father of eight children, five sons, one deceased, and three daughters. Grandfather of 17, great-grandfather of six, father-in-law of three, pop and pop pop to many. Through wonderful yes, latter so years, Bishop Gibbs was a committed husband to Mother Pearly M. Gibbs and was a dedicated sibling to his family. Bishop Gibbs devoted his life to Christ over 40 years ago by accepting the charge to go catch man through the deliverance of God's word. It was in the year of 1991 when Bishop Gibbs embarked on the journey of leadership and faithfully embraced the Lord's calling into the pastoral field. Secured with this calling, Bishop Gibbs accepted the tremendous obligations to be a shepherd and a wise master builder for the kingdom of God. From in-depth studying of the Word of God, Bishop Gibbs motivated his people to try God in all things and passionately delivers God's messages to the heart of man. With over 40 years of committed service, Bishop Gibbs' trust in God has led him through many valleys and blessed him to overcome all mountains. With his anointed hands he has blessed over hundreds of people by fixing rebuilding lives, vehicles, homes, businesses, and most of all provides healing for the soul. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty. Bishop Henry A. Gibbs previously served on the general board of bishops in the Bible Way Church's worldwide organization. Bishop Gibbs previously served as the diocesan bishop of the Pennsylvania Eastern Delaware Diocese. Bishop Gibbs is grateful of God for the journey in this ministry. He firmly testified to the power of prayer and knew that with God all things are possible. He fulfilled his assignment to God to go catch man. Just as God has lead Bishop Gibbs into great places, so shall he do the same for the next generation of Greater Bible Way Temple. Elder Benjamin Arthur Hardage III. Elder Benjamin Arthur Hardage III is a native of Wadmalaw Island, South Carolina, by way of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He is the son of Benjamin and Donna Hardage Jr. and Yolanda Brown. He is the eldest of five children. Benjamin accepted Christ at an early age and received the gift of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues at the age of 10. In 2007, he became a graduate of St. John's High School located in Johns Island, South Carolina. He attended Morris College in Sumter, South Carolina. He is currently enrolled at Belmont Abbey College in Belmont, North Carolina. Benjamin was called into the ministry in 2008 and was licensed to preach in 2009 by the Churches of God and True Holiness International. In 2011, he was ordained as an elder in the Lord's Church by the Sounds of Praise Pentecostal Fellowship. Elder Hardage currently serves as the executive elder at the Genesis Church under the leadership of Pastor Johnny and Lady Rachel Brown. Elder Hardage is currently employed as the behavior modification technician and bus administrator at Carmel Middle School. In addition to that, he leads a mentoring group called Boys to Men in which he founded in 2016. Elder Hardage also serves as assistant football coach for the Carmel Middle School Cougars. Elder Benjamin Hardage III is married to the former Monique Gregg of Florence, South Carolina. He lives by Isaiah 40, 31. 
They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount upon wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Most importantly, Elder Benjamin Hardage III passionately exemplifies that he has been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. He boldly declares that he is saved, sanctified, and that with a mighty burning fire. Let's receive the man of God. Well, come on, while you're clapping your hands, can we give God praise? Oh, come on, Zion, let's lift up a praise unto the Father. This is the day the Lord has made. I have no other choice but to rejoice and be glad in it. The day was made before I even got out of my bed. I said the day was made before I even opened my eyes. It's the day the Lord has made. I have no choice. Come on, Zion, lift up a praise unto him. I have no choice but to rejoice. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Hallelujah. Amen. You may have your seats just momentarily. I'm not going to do much talking outside of preaching, but I'm excited. Amen. I'm always excited to be in Philadelphia. Amen. I'm even more excited to um, have the invitation, amen, to be with Greater Bible Way Temple on this morning. As uh, Pastor said, I'm no visitor. This is home. Hallelujah. This is home. This is, uh, this is it for me. This is uh, the, the Muslims have uh, the place they look to, right? They have their Mecca. Hallelujah. And in my spiritual walk with Christ, I consider this place my Mecca. My Mecca. I do. I consider this place my Mecca. That gentleman right there on the wall, amen, taught me so much. He was so mean to me. He was mean. He was mean to me. I'm just joking. Uh, but he was mean in a way that uh, caused me to think. He would come around and say, you still dumb? I said, no, I've never been dumb. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, but it was because of Bishop Gibbs, uh, whom I affectionately called Uncle Allen, who by in no shape, form, or fashion was my biological uncle. He, in fact, <laughs> was my cousin. Uh, and I did not discover that until I was 13, that Uncle Allen was not uh, Uncle Allen. I, I didn't know. Uncle Allen and baby. I didn't know they were my aunt and uncle. But uh, they treated me as such my entire life, and I'm grateful for his life and legacy. Can we celebrate him one more time? Thank God for him. Amen. The scripture tells us in Proverbs that the memory of the righteous is blessed. Um, and when I first learned that scripture, I thought it was talking about my memory. But I later discovered that it was talking about the memory of the saints who had gone on to be with the Lord. The memory of the righteous is blessed. And it's an honorable thing to continue to give honor to the man of God who has laid the foundation for so many of us in this room. I do thank God for your pastor. Would you help me celebrate amen, my big cousin, amen Pastor Carl Gibbs hallelujah amen, I thank God for all of your officers, everybody in their respective place, and listen, my parents are here today, would you help me celebrate Benjamin Hardage Jr amen, and Donna Hardage amen amen, my grandmother is here today, would you help me celebrate Amen, Sister Sharon Smallwood. Amen. And my aunt is here today. Amen. She served as my driver. Would you help me celebrate Sister Sharon Bentley? My grandma taught me years ago, people don't have to be nice. I thank Aunt Fudgy for driving me to church. Amen. My wife is not here with me today, and I feel some type of way. However, amen, she is watching. She's back at the Genesis Church. Would you help me celebrate my wife, Minister Monique Hardage? Uh, it's one wife for one white life, because I don't plan to get another one. I don't, I don't plan to get another one. Amen. We're going expressly to the word of God. I do thank God for my pastors, amen, giving me the release to be here on today. Pastor Johnny and Lady Rachel Brown. I thank God for them and the Genesis Church. We're going to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16, amen. One of the uh, 
one of the precious saints from our church has a sister here. Thank God for the woman of God, amen, who often calls and gives me encouragement. I thank God for, amen. Thank God for her. Amen. We're going to Matthew chapter 16. It's not my intentions to be with you before you long. I'm actually setting my time up because I am a holiness preacher. And sometimes we try to tell the whole story at one time. So uh, don't want to tell the whole story today, but I do want to tell the story. Uh, Matthew 16, verse number 13. When you have it, if you don't mind standing with me. Uh, reads and Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi and he asked his disciples saying who do men say that I the son of man am and they said some say thou art John the Baptist some say Elias others Jeremiah or one of the prophets and he said unto them but whom say ye that I am and Peter answered Simon Peter answered that's important Simon Peter answered and said thou art the Christ the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Sound, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed it to thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I build my church, and the gates of hell should not prevail against it. And I give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth, shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever I shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Uh, verse 20, just for preaching purposes, then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. Let's pray. Kind Father, we thank you for this preaching moment. Father, we ask that you allow Benjamin to decrease, that the Holy Ghost that lives in me will increase. Speaking clearly to our hearts, open wisdom, we look for you to impart. As always, God, we yield our members to you. Every part of our anatomy and mobility, my will I give to you. I'll do what you say. Do use me, Lord, to show someone the way and enable me to say my storage is empty. I'm available until you give us prophetic accuracy and results at the altar. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may have your seats. I uh, want to entitle this lesson today. I want to entitle it, It's Solid. It's Solid. If I had to give it a subtopic, uh, it's kind of just came to me in prayer this morning. From a pebble to a stone. All right. From a pebble to a stone. Let, let's begin this lesson today by talking about the difference between reaction and response, responding, reaction and responses, reaction and responses. Uh, some would say that they're the same thing. Some would say my reaction is my response or my response is my reaction. But I beg to differ just a little bit. Re action um, in a definition would be um, it's driven by beliefs right so my actions are driven by my beliefs it's driven by biases it's driven um, by prejudice um, my reaction to red rice is different than uh, somebody else who's not from Guatemala because um, because of my bias because because of my belief I'm prejudiced towards okra soup I am you may think it's nasty but I'm prejudiced and when you say, see, Veronica says it's nasty, but when I hear okra soup was cooked, I get excited. Something in me begins to leap. My reaction changes, right? Because reactions are birthed out of the unconscious. Mm -hmm. All right. When you say something without thinking. So to say that we're going to have red rice and okra soup yeah. without thinking, I'm going to say, oh yeah, because that's my unconscious. But God does not desire for us to think from our unconscious. Mm. When you think from your unconscious or when you um, live life based off reaction, you run the risk, listen to what I'm saying, you run the risk of 
going into def defense mechanism, right? So people who react, it's a defense mechanism. When you, when you react to something somebody says to you, uh, if they said it to you nasty, if they said it to you nicely, when you react, it, 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 it serves as a defense mechanism. I, I'm reacting because I want you to know I'm not a kid. I'm not to be played with. I'm not to be toyed with, right? You cannot live life off reaction. Reactions are based off of moments. Mm -hmm. It takes no consideration for long-term effects. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Reactions are based off of moments. Mm -hmm. It takes no consideration for long-term effects. Mm -hmm. But God desires for us to learn how to respond properly. Right. The carnal have a reaction, but the righteous have a response. Mm -hmm. A response, on the other hand, usually comes more slowly. It's based off of information from both the conscious and the unconscious. A response is more ecological, meaning that it takes consideration of the well-being of others. My response to God is yes. It's going to cost me my life. I'm going to have to give up some things. That's okay because I'm looking for long term. My response to God is yes. yes. I don't just want to react to God I don't, because reaction is for the moment. Reaction is what causes us to go back and forth with God when you react to the service. People who get saved off an emotional fix. You got saved because, you know, okay, they made me feel bad and I cried. That, that's a reaction. But when you respond to God, you don't just get saved, but you make a decision to turn. Reaction is coming to the front of the church and I shake the preacher's hand and, and I tell him, yes, I want to be a part of Bible, babe. But my response is I'm going to give up everything that's contrary to the word of God. That's why God wants the righteous to respond. But then even in response, we have to be careful. We have to make sure that we're responding the right way. Because there is a right and wrong way to respond. Hmm. Let's let, 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 let's take a guess at this. Uh, there is a right and a wrong way to respond. So remember, a response is based off of the conscious and the unconscious, right? It comes slowly. My response to serving God wasn't based off of a feeling, but it was based off of a relationship. And what happens, here's, here, here, here comes the dichotomy. The dichotomy is when we have religion over relationship. And it's a dangerous thing to be religious, and that's all. God requires more than religion. God requires relationship. He requires habitation. He requires you to let him live inside of you. I'm talking about the difference between reacting and responding. Reactions will hinder the flow of God in your life. Reacting wrong, reacting period, will stop the blessings of God in your life. But it's the response to whatever God wants me to do. Though you slay me, yet will I trust you. That's how I feel like Job. That's what Job said. Job said, though you slay me, here it is now. The devil comes and says, hey, I'm looking for something to do, God. I'm bored. And God says, have you considered my servant Job? And the devil said, yeah, but you got to hedge your protection around him. And God God says, I'll drop the hedge, and I bet you he still won't curse me to my face. And the devil said, uh -huh. okay, watch this. Watch what I do to him. God says, you can do everything but touch his life. Yeah. Mm. And watch Job's response. Mm. Job comes back and says, though you slay me, it's, a, it's my response. My, my response to God. I went to the doctor a few months ago. The doctor told me I had polyps on my throat. And I said, I said, no, I don't. She said, yes, you do. I said, no, I don't. She said, yes, Benjamin, you do. I said, okay. I said, well, you give me a month. And I ain't going to lie to you. I left out the doctor and I said, Lord, polyps, did you say that? Stuff got 
cancer, and you know, it's a little cancerous. Lord, I don't want no polyps on my throat. I need my voice. She told me don't sing. She told me don't talk. And I said, well, that's impossible. We got church tonight. I can't, I can't not sing. She told me don't sing. I had no voice. If you go back in the month of July and watch our church lives, I mean, my voice was shot. I had no voice. I'll be up in church singing, and my voice would go out. It would crack, and I would laugh at myself. And I was sitting in service one day, and I said, now, God, you have to heal me. Come on. That's what I said to him. I said, God, you have to heal me. And God said to me, he said, Benjamin, I want you to watch your response. And I said, what? God, I said, heal me. Okay, I didn't ask you. I didn't ask you for no money. I didn't ask you for no new car. I asked you to heal me. He said, Benjamin, watch your response. I said, okay, God, I ain't nobody talking to me but you right now. And my answer is yes, but can you heal me? Like, I just need to know you're going to come through in a month and heal me. Because I done told the doctor, give me a month. And if I go back there in a month and I'm not healed, I'm going to look like crazy. You're going to heal me? This is the conversation I'm having with God sitting in church while my pastor was preaching a message entitled The Fitting Room. I'm having this conversation with God because he's talking about it's the fitting room and God's trying to get you to try this on. And I'm saying, God, if you got me trying this on, can you heal me? me why I'm trying this situation on and God says watch your response I said okay all right maybe that's the answer I'm gonna watch my response and as I went for the entire month things kept being thrown at me left and right I was like oh okay I'm not gonna say that and then something else happened I said oh what? I'm not I'm not I'm not gonna say that and, then, and as I began to go, I, I, I felt myself getting better. I, I got in church one Sunday, and I started singing. I said, man, I couldn't do this for about three weeks. And, and right then and there, the Holy Ghost said, remember, God said, watch your response. Because even though you respond, you can still respond in the wrong way and miss the move of God. Your response has nothing to do with you. Your response has everything to do with the glory of God. That man responded to God. He didn't just react, but he responded. And here it is now, 32 years later, we're still standing on a foundation that he responded to. But it's about your response to God. It's about your, it's about your response, okay? Mm. By now, reactions are based on momentum. Responses uh, are based on, on movements, right. all right? Reactions are based on momentum. Responses are based on movements. If you want to start a movement, respond properly. If you want to see things change in your house, respond properly. If you want to see things change on your job, respond properly. If you want to see your finances change, respond properly. If you want to see your body healed or your son or daughter come in to the ark of safety, your response has to be different. If you want your husband or your wife to get saved or to get right, you have to respond differently. And the response of the righteous is worship. Yes, Lord. The response of the righteous is worship. No matter what comes my way, no matter what hits my life, I will always worship you. And I will not be silent. I will always worship you as long as I'm breathing, as long as I got breath in my body, as long as the house shut up. I said, I lift your hands and worship him right there. Yes, Lord, I worship you. So hopefully by this point, where am I at on my time? Okay. Whew. Hopefully by this point, we have a better understanding of the difference between responding and reacting. Hopefully you'll leave out of here today saying, I won't react, but I'm going to respond. It's okay for somebody to call you into a meeting and you say, you listen to what they have to say and you leave the meeting and you say, hey, give me a day or two to get back with you because I don't want to react to what you're saying, but I want to respond to what you're saying. I want to make sure I have the right response. I don't just want to tell you yes because that's what you want to hear, 
but I want to make sure this yes is secured in God. I want to make sure this yes is found in the right thing. I want to make sure my response is not found in me being vindictive to you. So give me a minute. Let me respond the right way. And that puts us smack dab in the middle of Matthew 16. Because the conversation that Jesus has just had with the Pharisees, he responded the right way. They came at him looking for a reaction. They came at him looking for him to, you know, go off on them. But Jesus said, no, wait, you hypocrites. You look for, you look towards the sun to tell you what kind of weather we're going to have. And you look towards the moon to tell you how the nighttime is going to be. But you're telling me you know all of that, but you don't have the ability to discern, to discern times and seasons? You're a hypocrite. You don't know what you're talking about. You mean to tell me you come to church every week? You watch every Bible study we got. You are part of every live stream we have. And you still can't discern times and seasons. You still don't know when to be quiet and when to shut up. Because you know it's a difference. You've been serving God all these years and you still don't have the right response to him. You singing, you shouting, you preaching, you dancing, and you don't have the right response to God, but yet you won't come to me, Jesus, and you're going to start questioning me. <laughs> so Jesus has this conversation with the Pharisees and, and the scribes, and they move on over, and so he gets his disciples in a corner. They have a family meeting. They have what we called at my house on 6023 Maybank Highway. They had what we call a private meeting. My grandma said, don't invite nobody. Tell Renee she can't come. Close the door. We got to talk about this. All right. yeah, yeah. If you knew anything about Rebecca Brown, it wasn't much talking, no. you know. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. We had to have a little family meeting. Jesus moves his disciples on the backside of the mountain and he says to them one profound question that I think shapes the entire mindset of the body of Christ. Who do men say that I am? It's, it's, so point number one is public perspective. Public perspective. Who do men say that I am? I got a question for you. Who do they call you on your job? Who, who do they call you in the grocery store? Who, who do they call you up at the bus station? Who, who do they call you? Do they know you're saved? <laughs> you know, I mean, outside of your long skirts and your Bible, do they know you're saved outside of your dark suits and your tie? Who do men say that you are? And I'm not talking about the church you. You know, the word integer, it, it, it's a mathematical term, and it means whole number. Right? It's the whole number. God wants, th that's where we get the word integrity. Right? Integrity is derived from the word integer. God wants the whole you. He don't just want the church you. He don't want the Sunday morning you, the, the made up you. I pressed my shirt. I got my suit together. I got my new mezzelins on. He don't want that you. He wants the whole you. He wants the you when the lights go off and you're all by yourself and nobody's there watching you. He wants that you. He wants the you that when you're way on the other side of town, away from 63rd and Gerard, are you still going to lift up the bloodstained banner of Jesus? God wants the whole you. Who do men say that I am? The disciples respond and say, uh, so, now, so now the issue is the disciples respond the right way, right? They respond properly. They say, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, some say uh, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. To be considered as one of those people was honorable. It was an honorable thing. That was, that was honorable to call, call Jesus that. So, so Jesus said, okay, okay, I got an idea of what the people are saying about me now. I know what the people are saying about me because I now understand why the Pharisees and the scribes came at me like they did a little earlier because who they think I am, they think I'm one of the prophets. So they expect me to come right here prophesying and when I'm not prophesying, then we got some issues. So they, they okay, I got a better understanding of who do they say I am. But here's the other question. Who do you say I am? The, the, the issue ain't what 
what the world is saying about me. But I want to know who do you say I am? Who do you call Jesus? See, it's not just enough to have a strong legacy. It's not just enough to build on a strong foundation. But what we have to do is take that foundation and build another foundation. Okay, I got one better for you. So over in uh, Hebrews chapter 13, it starts off by saying, uh, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily beset us. Right? And let us run this. Let's go there real quick. I want to read it the right way. Let's, let, let's, let's go there. Let's go there. I, I, I want to show you this. This is what God began to show me a few weeks ago. I want to show you this. I want to show you this real quick. Re Hebrews 13. Hebrews 13. Hebrews 13. All right. Yeah, yeah, no, Hebrews 12, I'm sorry, Hebrews 12, there it is, yeah, yeah, Hebrews 12, okay, here it is, he, uh, wherefore seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily beset us, and let us run to Jesus, let us look to Jesus, who's the author and finisher, so here's the issue, here's what we say, and this is this, I'm gonna be done with this, here's what we say, we have a cloud of witnesses cheering us on, that's what we say. That's not right, Pastor. So you know Bible. In order to understand 13, you have to go to 12. Over in 12, it lists all of these people. Uh, okay, it, it starts at 7. By faith, Noah being warned of God. By faith, Abraham. By faith, he sojourned. By faith, by faith. Okay, that's what 12 goes into. The whole book, whole chapter of 12 is a list of testimonies. It's, a, it's evidence that by faith, these people did this. And then over in 13, over at 11 is a whole list of people made it by faith. By faith, by faith, by faith. And then over in uh, 12, he comes back and saying, wherefore seeing we are so compassed about with great cloud of witnesses. We're compassed about in chapter 11 with a great cloud of witness. What I need to do is I need to take the example from the witnesses in chapter number 11 and build off of it. So it's not saying I got a cloud of witness cheering me on. No, 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 no. What the text is saying is I got a list of testimonies that if God brought Bishop out, if God brought Mother out, if God brought Abraham out, surely I got enough witnesses in the Bible that the same God will bring me out. My question is, who do you call him? I got too much evidence on God to go back. And so that's why Simon gets up and he says, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus says, blessed art thou, Simon bar Jonah. I'm going to wrap this up now. But flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. But my father who is in heaven. Oh, and here's my favorite part. This is what I was trying to get to. Upon this rock. Upon this rock I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. He said, Peter. Now Simon is called Simon Peter. He's called Simon Barjona. And then now here he's called Peter. Peter means pebble, little rock, Petra. Simon, up, I'm going to take your little rock, and upon your little rock, I'm going to build my church. My, I, I'm upon this rock, upon you. So, oh, my God. Woo, okay. Peter, upon the pebble, I'm going to take the pebble and build me a rock. Did you hear what he said? That's what Jesus said. Upon Petra, I'm going to build Petrus. Why am I going to build Petrus? Because you responded to me properly. Because your response was right. Your and when you respond to God right, he'll take your pebble and give you a rock. And that's all I came by to tell you, by the way, is that it's solid. Bishop responded the right way. He gave God a Petrus. And God gave him a Petrus. And upon this rock, God built a church. And Lord, have mercy. The gates of hell. The winds can't break it. Storms can't shake it. Death can't hold it. 
Sickness can't heal it. But upon this rock, God built a church. And I came today to be that pebble. I came to be the pebble. I want to respond right. I want to have the right response when they begin to cuss at me. I want to have the right response when they lie on me. I want to have the right response. Wait a minute. Watch what Jesus says. I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom. He gives them the keys right then. And we miss it. Oh God. He gives him the keys to the kingdom. I'm getting out of here right now. Because it's solid. Well, well, what are the keys what are the keys, Elder? Pastor was just, Pastor was just exalting on it a few minutes ago. We gotta watch all what we say, right? You can't say I'm sick because sickness will find you. You can't say I'm broke because broke will find you. So then Jesus gives us those same exact keys in this text today. After he tells Simon, upon this rock, upon this response, upon this notion, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell should not prevail against it. He says, and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom and whatsoever Whatsoever thou bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. You want to know why I don't walk around talking about I'm sick? Because I bind it up. You want to know why I didn't receive the report of Paulus? Because I bind it up. You want to know why I don't receive depression when people tell me they're depressed? Because I bind it up. You want to know why I don't believe all this crazy stuff that's going on in the world? Because I bind it up. Because because my response to God is right, he's given me keys to the kingdom. Lord, I thank you for keys. And whatsoever I bind on earth, Y'all can stay right there with me. You ain't even got to cut off no more. Whatsoever I bind on earth, gonna be bound in heaven. But here's the other part. And whatsoever thou loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. What God has for the people of God is already loosed in heaven. He's just waiting for us to respond to him properly. And when you respond to God properly, when you respond to God with the right sound, when you respond to God with the right attitude, whatever you loose on her, I said whatever you loose on her, I know you watch it at home, but whatever you loose on her, when you respond properly, God's going to loose in heaven. In other words, he's going to release it. And that's all I want to tell you as I finish my lesson is that it's been released. If you respond properly, that new job is released. That new house is released. But you got to watch your response. I'm going to praise him no matter what it looks like. I'll bless him even when I don't feel good. I'll shabak him with pain in my body because the Lord is a mighty God because the Lord is a righteous God. Bishop had it when he told us that all God wanted was a praise. If you praise him right, he'll bless you right. If you praise him right, he'll bless you right. All God wants is your response. Would you open your mouth and give him praise? I said it's solid. On Christ, the solid rock, I say, all other grounds is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sounds, oh may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness, his righteousness alone, for less to stand before the throne on Christ. Christ, the solid rock. I said it's a 
sure foundation. I said it's a sure foundation. I said it's a sure. It's a sure foundation. It's a sure foundation. Hey, it's a sure foundation. It's a sure foundation. I ain't going nowhere. I ain't going nowhere. I'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. I may have to cry, but when it's all over, when it's all over, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time, they're not worthy to be compared to the glory. I said there's going to be glory. I said there's going to be glory. I said there's going to be. Hey, Shata, Natanando Shaya. I said there's glory coming after this. You can dry your eyes. Go ahead to sleep tonight because there's glory. If you see weeping, tell weeping don't bring no overnight bags because weeping may endure, but joy. I'm so happy. It's solid. I'm built on a sure foundation. And my response will always be praise. I don't care if the floor falls from under me and the ceiling comes down. My response will be praise because it has to be more. I'm convinced there is more. I'm convinced there is more. Now listen. Now listen, we uh two things I a few things I just need to say and do before we close this lesson. One of them being a one of them being a foot praise. There is a there was a foot praise. There's a praise you gotta give them with your feet. We, we owe God a we owe God a thank you dance for several reasons, just because He's God. But then we we owe God a foot praise because that's the proper response. Sister Jennifer, I want to let you know you owe God a foot praise because uh, it was about four o'clock yesterday morning. I I dreamt about you. I dreamt about you. I dreamt about your house. And when I seen it, it was different. I mean, it was different, completely different. And I've been there, so I know what it looks like. But it was completely different. I mean, there was new furniture. Your kitchen was flipped around on the other side. Uh, it, it was, it was. I mean, it was different, Jennifer. I, I, I and in the dream, I, I wanted to say something, but I didn't want to insult you, right? I didn't want to be like, "Woo, Jennifer, look at this." But I, I didn't want to. I didn't say it in the dream. But when I woke up, I said, "Lord, that's." Jennifer house look good uh, and then I, I text you yesterday I said I'm going to call you right and I just never got a chance to do it but while I, while I was meditating yesterday the spirit of the Lord told me to tell you don't get comfortable I don't know what that means to you I don't, I don't know what that pertains to but the spirit of the Lord told me yesterday tell Jennifer don't get comfortable don't get comfortable. Don't get complacent. Don't because if you get comfortable in this season, it's going to slow down what God has ultimately been trying to give you. And what he's been trying to give you is far greater than what you could imagine. And so what you have to do right now is lose praise on the earth and watch God before this time next year. Watch God release everything that he has for you that's been stored up in heaven for years. Somebody help Jennifer praise him. said for years all right oh 
Open your mouth and shout yes, Lord. 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 Open your mouth and shout yes, Lord. They're right there. So, so Gwen, there's a prophetic praise. Now, I, I'm not exactly sure how it comes out, but there's a prophetic praise. And so you've been the seer of the family your entire life. Right, you see things before they happen. You see them in dreams. The Lord speaks it to your spirit. And when it happens, you almost be like, mm, I, mm, mm, I knew it. You're the seer. And so for the house, for this house, right? So you're the seer for the house. Now he's the pastor. Not, not, not trying to de diminish his anointing, but you're the seer, right? And so what has to happen right now is you have to give God praise because you see it turning. You see people coming. You see it getting better. You see Bishop's vision coming to pass again. It came to pass one time. It was almost like it came to pass and then the Lord took it away but here lately God's been showing you know it's getting ready to happen again and so Gwen you have to release a praise today that says Lord whatever you desire to do for greater Bible way we receive it now I don't want y'all to look at her but I want y'all to help her here we go one two three praise her It's already done. 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 Already done. Already done. Already done. Already done. It's already done. I got, I got four minutes. I got four minutes on my time. I got to get out of this. I was, uh, I was uh, sitting there, and uh, while I was sitting there, it was a little feather that just fell. It was a, it was a little, it was a little white feather. I don't know if anybody's seen it, but it, it was a little feather, and it was falling nice and slowly. And I started to grab it. The spirit told me, no, no, don't, don't touch it. And when the feather fell, the Lord said, tell Pastor Gibbs, I'm pleased with his service and that the glory resides here and it won't be long now. He's going to send you some fresh help. No, you got good help, but he's going to send you some fresh help. Y'all been doing this for years. You've been carrying it for years. Bishop used to come to South Carolina in the summertime and be there for, for weeks, preaching and running revivals. And Mother's Day, he was down with us, and y'all were here carrying on the service of the Lord for years. The Lord said, tell Pastor Gibbs, I'm getting ready to send him some fresh hell. It's going to be fresh hell. It's going to be fresh hell. I'm going to raise up some of your nieces and nephews and your you go, I'm telling you, but it's, it's going to be some fresh help. It's going to be people, they're going to come back. That's what I see. I see people coming back. Like, I know somebody else is doing something over there, but I keep seeing the door open, and every time I see the door, I'll be like, they're coming in. They, they're coming. They're coming. He's going to send you some fresh help. Lift your hands all over, all over the room. I'm done. I pray this lesson made sense today. It's solid. My response to God is yes. I'm not just going to react, but I want to respond. 
and I want to respond properly because proper response yields great fruit. Sister Janice, there are about five people that you need to call this week and give them the word of the Lord and you've been wrestling in your spirit with it. Lord, should I call them? Should I say this? And you're pretty sure about when you hear God, but this time you were like, mm, I don't know God. I, are they going to receive this from me? Spirit of the Lord said, you have the release. You have to call them this week. And when you tell them what God says, they're going to receive it. And you're going to call them at the right time. It's going to be the God's going to tell you when he's going to say do it now. You're going to need to drop it and do it then. But it's going, they're going to get the release they need. Yeah. And God's going to give you the breakthrough you desire. There's something you have on the altar before the Lord right now. God's going to give it to you when you be obedient to him this week. Everybody's standing that can. Who, who's looking for a job? Who needs a job? You need a job? You need a job? Anybody else need a job? There's a release of finances coming to this house. And, and finances will come because people have jobs. Now, God does give miracle money. Yeah, God does give miracle money. But most finances come to the house of God because people have jobs. And when pastor was talking to me in the office, I felt a release of finances, not just coming to him, but coming to the house. Because you do know when the head is blessed, the entire body is blessed. And Janelle, I want to tell you, you're going to get that job before the end of, before the end of October. You're going to get the job. I'm telling you, I don't ever, that's my timer. I don't even know, I don't even know if you replied to it, but I'm telling you, before the end of October, this is what I feel in my spirit. I promise you I do. And it's going to be what you want. It's not going to be what you settle for. It's going to be what you, hiya, yeah, yeah. You ask God for certain hours. And somebody told you, you might as well just take what they give you. No, but God going to give you what you ask for. Because you've always given him the right response. I got to get out of this. I got to. I get, I got to get out of this, but I feel, I do, I feel something creeping on me. Brother musician, I don't know what it is you need from the Lord, but the Lord said by the end of this week, you're going to receive a phone call and it's going to be the answer that you desire. It's, yeah, it's, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. It's not going to be a hard answer either. It's going to be the soft, gentle answer you desire. I, I, if I be a man, of, I promise I don't pro, pro, uh, pro, profess to be a prophet, but if I be a man of God, what you need from the Lord, he's going to give you the answer this week. And you won't have to compromise anything for it. That's all I hear. But he's going to give you the release you need. Everybody lift your hands. Lift your hands. We're done. Uh, when your spirit speaks to me with my whole heart I'll agree and my answer will be yes Lord yeah we're getting out of here I promise but we just owe him this worship when your spirit speaks to me with my whole heart I'll, I'll agree and my answer will be yes, Lord, yeah. Oh, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. From the bottom of, from the bottom, to the depths of my soul. Completely yes. Come on, my soul. It says yeah. And so, Father, we thank you. 
We thank you that our foundation is sure. It's solid. Thank you that we're going from pebble to rock because we're responding to you properly. We bless you that everything that we've loosed in this place today, oh, we bind up sickness, we bind up depression, we bind up low self-esteem, we bind, we bind it up now, we bind up financial lack in the name of Jesus. Father, we bind it right now in the name. Satan, you are a liar, you're a defeated foe. The blood of Jesus is against you. We bind you up in the name of Jesus. And Father, we lose your peace, we lose your victory, we lose your praise, we lose your presence, we lose your glory. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for what you've done in this place. Bless us now, Lord. Please not allow this word to have fallen on deaf ear. But Father, we pray that not many days hence we'll see a return from it. Bless every part of this ministry. Thank you for what you're doing for them. Father, we promise to be so careful to give your name all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. We promise to bring fame to your name and not shame to your name. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Come on, clap your hands. Let's receive plastic gifts in Jesus' name. Amen. The hour is far spent. And we thank God for that word. It's solid. It's solid. That word, amen, was for this house. We thank God. Give God a hand praise for his man, servant, Elder Benjamin Hardy. Amen. Amen. God has blessed him in a marvelous way. I see nothing but spiritual growth. I see nothing but uh, growing spiritually and educationally. We thank God, amen, that God has sustained him and keeping him. Amen. I thank God that God's favor will continue to rest upon you and that he will grant you favor. Amen. I thank God for him in the name of the Lord. I don't know about you, but I receive a whole lot out of that message. Amen. 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 Did not, Bishop always say, did not our hearts burn? Amen. As he spoke to us, by the way, it's solid. It's solid. It said so much. Amen. Taught me. Amen. Amen. Because I was one that always react instead of responding. Amen. 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 Only those that know me well can say that. Amen. Amen. We have, amen, this proclivity sometimes to react instead of responding. And I like the part where he said sometimes you they say, say something to you. Well, give, give me a, give me a day. Give me, a, give me a few hours. Amen. To digest, amen. What we talked about, so that I can respond properly. Amen. Amen. Dad, I, I, Dad, Dad, I don't know what you did, but you did such a marvelous job. Amen. Mom, I thank you so much. You did such a marvelous job. Amen. 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 Grandma. Keep on keeping on. Amen. Amen. I thank God. Amen. Auntie, God bless you. Amen. I thank God for the man that God has used in such a marvelous way. Amen. It's one thing to see him from one stage, and then you see him prog progressing yeah. into, amen, this stage. We know that, amen, God is a sustainer, that God is a keeper, and God answers prayers. And we thank God for that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, I know the hours far spent. I know they're about to begin. Amen. Amen. Next door. Amen. But I spoke about something a few uh, minutes ago. Y'all remember seed time and harvest? Well, I am one. Amen. After a word like that, I'm looking for someone to help me seed into that word. I'm going to seed 100. And I just asking just if you would seed 20. Amen. Brother Darrell, would you help me with that? Amen. Amen. I know Sister Jennifer, Sister Veronica. Amen. 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 Can seed 20. Amen. We're not paying God for the word. The word has already been paid for. Amen. But I like to plant seeds in certain soil. I like to plant the seed in certain soil. And when I've seen him uh, proclaim and begin to expound on the word of God, it gave me a such a great 
amen, sense of, amen, pride on the inside that what Bishop introduced him to was Jesus Christ. And he took that and ran with it. Amen, amen. And I know it's Founders Day. Amen. We had our offering to give for that. But I'm asking those that can, amen, if you will, amen, with a $20 seed, amen. I just want a seed, a seed offering, amen, amen. And watch God respond because the seed that you're sowing is in good ground. Somebody say good ground. Good ground, good ground, good, ground. good man of God, we can't pay you. But I sure would like to give you a love something, amen, and let you know, amen, that I'm proud of you, amen. And I'm going to seed into that word that it's solid, that it's solid, amen, from pebble to stone. Anybody know that God can turn things around in your favor from a pebble to a stone and how you react, how you respond. And I, I, like, I, like, I like that what he said a few moments ago. Somebody needs to release a praise on earth and watch God, oh my God. God, I'm trying, man, watch God release a sound from heaven. Oh, my God. Listen, listen, listen. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. And I know, I know we're still on, we're still live, and I know we're not going to, I'm not going to lie. I came into the house of God, and I, I said to myself, God, I don't see nothing happening. I've been taking, I've taken this, this mantle that's been, that's been transferred in a position that I did not want, but it was something that I had to step into. And I said, God, I don't see nothing growing. If anything, I see people not showing up to church. I know a whole lot of folk, and I, I see them online. That's wonderful. Amen. And I, I, I was, listen, I'm not going to lie. I was discouraged. So, so much so that I'm questioning God God, why aren't these seats filled like they used to? God, I'm thinking about just, hey, maybe it's not me. Maybe someone else need to be in this position because what I'm doing is not working. And then the man of God comes and said, God is going to send. Fresh help. Fresh help. Uh, I, uh, listen, listen. I, I, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be honest. I I was at a critical place. I just wanted to just you know what is it? What 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 did they uh, when they when they in the fight and they and the coach on, in a corner saying that he's getting tore up? What do he do? He throw in the towel. Because I know you're just not going to make it through this round. And I came in here and I'm saying to myself, I'm not going to make it through this round. Because I'm not seeing what God has promised him. I'm not seeing it. And I'm, you know, the enemy saying, well, what you're doing is not working. It's not working. It's not working. And I'm saying to myself, you know what? What I'm doing, and I'm starting to say, and I said to y'all a few moments ago, be careful yes. what you say out of your mouth. Yes. Yes. But watch my wrist. Ooh. Ooh. Watch my response. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna react. But I'm gonna respond. Yes. My response is to bless, be a blessing. And when God bless, that door is open. Woo, my God, my God. I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. I receive that. I receive fresh help. I mean, you come wherever you at, you know, we don't have to wait for it. Uh, usher, come around. Those of you that just where you at, just a seed, just a seed, just a seed, a $20 seed if you can. Those that can do more, God bless you. But I receive that. I'm going to respond properly. I'm going to digest what was said. Ooh. Mm. Mm. 
My, 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 my God from Zion. I'm trying to behave. I'm trying to behave because we got to go. We got to go. We got to go. I'm trying to respond. I'm trying to, I'm trying to behave because we got to go. I know. But I feel fresh help. Fresh help. My fresh help. Mm. Listen. We're going to ask everyone to rest on your feet, rest on your feet, rest on your feet, because we got to, we got to go, we got to go, we got to go, we got to go, we got to go. But look at somebody and tell somebody my, my response will always be praise. Woo, let me say that again. Tell somebody my response will always be praise. All right, all right. Grab someone by the hand, because we got to go, we got to go. We gotta go, we gotta go. Grab that hand, grab that hand, grab that hand. Ben, grab that hand. Get that mic, where's your mic at? Grab that hand, because we're gonna relieve this place, but certainly not out of its presence. We're gonna ask Elder Hardest to give us the blessings of our benediction, the doxology in Jesus' name. Amen, God bless you. Hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you that as we leave this thank place, you, we know sir. from your presence that you give us traveling grace and mercies to our home and destination. Father, we thank you for a special sweet blessing falling on our homes and our lives. Even now, we give you glory for it. As always, God, we promise to be your people because you've been our God. We promise to bring fame to your name and not shame to your name. It's in the matchless, mighty, mighty marvelous, majestic name of Jesus Christ. And that we pray, everybody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Consider yourself dismissed. God bless you. Thank you.